That's right. It's overrated, underrated. Every single Wednesday, we mm. prompt you for your topics, and we decide if they are overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. Like Black Friday sales. Overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. I think all sales are good. In you general. think so? Yeah, sales are good. I mean, if you're buying, looking to buy stuff, it's good to have sales. Yeah. Like, especially in this economy, why pay regular prices for things if you can avoid it? Why ever buy anything that's not on sale? Right. You I know? mean, especially nowadays, you got to try to, you know, everything's gone up in price. Yeah. You got to try to save a shekel here and there. Feels like even Apple is doing, uh, like, uh, sales now. You'll see uh, their phones and watches and stuff, like previous generations at Costco. Yeah. You know, everybody's got a sale going on. Why buy anything full price? Man, I sound like such an old man right now. <laughs> We're becoming old men. Anyways, well, Josh, you used to work at a uh, electronics store. I did. Uh, back then, Black Friday was like a month. Was <laughs> yeah, it's there, always a month. I will say, okay, but they was go like, down was more the action- on the day. Yeah, was, they go down more on the day. So Black Friday and Boxing Day, there were door crasher sales in store or yes, uh, both? Both oh. online and in store. And okay. I, I will say. Uh, Black Friday was generally better than Boxing Day. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. wasn't even a Canadian creation to begin with. We just like all the all the companies were like, you know what? We should do this too. Well, it's like why let people go to the states to go shop in Black yes. Friday? You can shop shop here for Black Friday. I think true. that's a big part of it. Too. Very true. Yes. Uh, so uh, next one. Yes. We'll take from the listener Justin in East Van benching J T Miller. Overrated or underrated? Underrated. I, I mean, it, it had the desired effect. So how can you say that it's overrated? It's it's something we've been sort of looking to see if coaches would do here in Vancouver, and Rick Tockett has done it. So I appreciate it. It's underrated. Yeah, I think it's underrated in terms of its impact. I mean, some of the discussions sometimes can be overrated in terms of you know where it goes. Yes. But I do agree that the move in and of itself, underrated. Accountability is very good. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen enough of it here. I think Tockett knows that he can, uh, like, he can do that with Miller, right? And it's going to resonate with the rest of the team. But also, that's a player who he needs to keep his emotions at a good level. Like, mm-hmm. Not run too hot, but keep them at the the right level. You don't want to dial them back too much, but you don't want them to get too hot. You want to keep JT Miller right in that sweet spot, which is where he's been for most of the season. But last night, yeah, the penalties were a bit much. Next one from Ernest. A pointless and minus two Pew Suter. He was underrated last night. I was gonna. I, I knew where you were gonna go with this. So, like last night, uh, there was a couple of times he made some pretty big defensive plays. Yep, good stick, man. Yeah, kid's got a good skit stick. I know he's not done enough offensively, but you know what? When you're only making one point six million dollars, I'm not gonna cry about it too much. As, as long as you are doing your job defensively and that he has been doing for most of this season and the role that he's been given by the Vancouver Canucks, I can live with it. Now there's going to have to be some scoring eventually, but I still think the signing to this point has had a net positive effect on the Vancouver Canucks. What have we talked about? Steady play down the middle. Yeah. At the very least we, we get offense, but the Canucks have a top six is like, at least for the bottom six. Can you not get shelled? I'd rather have a scoreless Pew Suter right now than Sheldon drives. Yeah. Cause he couldn't take the same type of shifts. And also his face off percentage this season, 55.6%. It's been good. He has been good. He's playing 15 minutes a game. He's been good defensively. He's a dash too, but considering the fact that he's got no offense going for him, he hasn't been on the ice for any offense. Yeah, Him being a dash two through nine games tells you that he's been pretty good defensively. Because had he just had like been on the ice for three points even here, we're talking about a guy maybe being plus three or plus one. Yeah. He's been like he's been solid, you know, and a big part of the reason, not so much, uh, well, last night in some of those chaotic moments that the Canucks were having, he made some uh, big-time defensive plays to – you know, uh, lift a stick mm-hmm. in, in the slot and, you know, challenge a shot, challenge a potential high danger chance, prevent it from happening. You know, those are those are big moments that you need in a game where you clearly didn't have your, your best stuff as a team. And if you're deciding to, or if something happens to one of your top six centers and he has to take a shift with, Pedersen, with Besser 
or if he has to take a shift with Kuzmenko, yeah, he's talented enough that he can not look out of place being there. Not long term, but can he be there for a spell and he can handle that? Uh, I've liked Puce Suter. We haven't had enough pew 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 moments, pew, but pew. eventually. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one from Nate. The Senators hiring Peter Shirelli. Overrated or underrated? If it happens. Uh, would it be bad if I did it? Chirelli. Because that's how you would. Yeah, don't. Say okay, it. sure. I, I mean, actually? that's your brand. Is it actually? <laughs> it would be. I, yeah. it would it? Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. That's how you would say it. No, nobody wants to hear that. But uh, look, this would be an incredibly underrated move for the takes. I'm here for it, man. I don't know why this guy would get another job as a general manager in the National Hockey League. I've been uh, floored before by National Hockey League teams and their pensions to just run through the same old guys that have done it or been there before. And after everything that happened in Edmonton, I just I don't know what this uh, what he's done to earn another general manager's job. I'm not saying he shouldn't have a job in the league, but. You're telling me this is like one of the 32 guys that should have a general manager's job in the National Hockey League? I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I don't think he should get it. Now, the question is, does he have a good relationship with Michael Andlauer? Ultimately, oftentimes... That seems to be the yes. Yeah. And Steve Steos, right? They were... They work bring, together. He brings he Steos him. into yeah. to Edmonton. Now, it could very well be the case where Steos becomes a GM, and then he brings along Shirelli in terms yeah. of as an AGM or something, which whatever. Like, you know, you can be mad about it, but whatever, right? Like... You know, people can learn from their mistakes. People yes. can evolve and get better. I think that's okay. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what we see. Yeah. It just wouldn't be very um, encouraging if you go from Pierre Dorian to yeah. Peter Shirelli. Like, it's, yeah. uh, it's a pretty tough go. And it's a tough sell for the fans, I think, too. Uh, the, the takes and hockey Twitter would be fire, though. So it would be underrated if it did actually happen. I, I don't even think, you know, he got the most flack for the Hall for Larson trade. And, you know, Larson, it took a while, but Larson ended up playing a pretty damn big yeah. and quality role for the Edmonton Oilers. And I don't think they've really replaced Larson's minutes mm -hmm. since they lost him in free agency to the Seattle Kraken. But, like, that last stretch of him as general manager of the Oilers when he signed Koskinen to that extension, he traded for, like, Brandon Manning and Alex Petrovic. Like, those were just awful moves that made zero sense and did nothing but set the Oilers back. Now, those are the kind of like moves that are desperate for a guy that's about to lose his job that I just, I don't know how your reputation overcomes that more than anything else.